Hi everyone, I'm Melinda Barnes and today I'm going to teach you how to calculate the future value of an investment. Um, I'm someone who loves math, but rather than just teach you some boring, irrelevant math problem, I would much rather teach you something that involves money. Money is something that's super relevant to most people. And if you invest your money into an account that earns interest, which I'll get more into interest later, but if you invest your money in an account that earns interest, it's going to increase over time. And the way that we're going to figure this out is by using a formula. We are going to calculate the future value of a one-time investment by taking the present value of your money and multiplying it times one plus the interest rate and then to the exponent of the amount of periods. Now, if this sounds intimidating, uh, I promise it's much easier than it looks and I'm gonna break it down for you while also um, explaining the definitions of each of these variables. So we're trying to figure out the future value of your investment. The future value is just how much your investment is going to be worth at a future date. Now, the first variable that we need to figure out or define at least is present value. Present value is just the amount of money that you're going to be investing today. The second variable that's important to understand for the future value formula is interest. If you're investing money, interest helps determine how much money you're going to earn over a period of time. If you're borrowing money, interest determines how much money you will owe over a period of time. And how we're going to find the interest rate is you will be given an interest rate in, as a percentage, and that just needs to be converted to a decimal that's going to be your numerator. Your denominator is how often interest is compounded per year. And compounded just means how often interest is accrued. And interest can usually be compounded annually. Uh, it could be semi-annually, which is twice a year. Quarterly is four times a year. So the amount of times interest is compounded per year will also be given to you. All you have to do is plug in these two numbers into this fraction and that's going to be your interest rate. The last variable that we need to understand is the amount of periods. And this also has to do with how often interest is compounded, just like we used in determining interest. So for periods, we're going to take the amount of years, and that's just how many years in the future are we wanting to figure out the value of our money. And then you're going to multiply that again by how often interest is compounded. And again, like I said before, um, when determining interest, in, interest can be compounded annually, which means you would just multiply by one. Semi-annually, is twice a year, so that means you would multiply it by two. Quarterly is four times a year, so that means you would multiply it by four, and so on. Now that we've defined all of the variables in the future value formula, I'm gonna give us an example so that we can actually use what we learned in a real life example. So let's say you have $500, and you make a one-time investment into a savings account. Okay, this savings account earns 6% interest that's compounded annually. And you wanna know how much money will be in your savings account in five years. We're going to use the future value formula to determine the future value of our investment. And there's only three steps to it. So the first step, all we're doing is just identifying what number is going to replace each of those variables. So in our example, the present value is 500 because we're investing $500 today. The second value, interest, is going to be 0 0.06 because our interest rate is 6%. 
divided by how often it's compounded per year. And our example said that it was compounded annually, which means once per year. 0.06 divided by 1 is just 0.06. And then the last variable we need to identify is the periods. Um, we want to know how much this investment is worth in five years, which is our numerator. The denominator is, again, how often it's compounded per year. Our example said that it was compounded annually, which is just once a year. So our periods, 5 divided by 1 is just going to be 5. The next step in this process, step 2, is simply plugging in those values into the formula. So for the future value formula, we know that our present value is 500. So that's plugged in. The second variable is interest, and we already identified interest as 0 0.06. So now we have two variables plugged in. All we have left is the periods, and we identified the amount of periods as 5. So now our future value formula is 500 times 1 plus 0 0.06 to the fifth power. The last step in this process is simply entering that equation into a calculator. Rather than actually solving this mathematically, um, I don't want to make it too complicated and most people have access to a calculator or you can plug this into an online calculator and you're only plugging in that right side of the equation, um, the one the side with only numbers. Once you plug this into a calculator, you're going to get $669.11. Now, what does that mean? Let's uh, bring this all into context. What that means is if you make a one-time investment of $500 today, and that's put into a savings account that earns 6% interest compounded annually, then in five years, your account is going to have $669.11. And that's by doing nothing. All you did was invest your $500. And that interest is what increased the value of the money in your account. And that's how you calculate the future value of a one-time investment using the future value formula. I hope this was helpful for you. And thank you for listening.